Welcome back to the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Travis Ryer, senior analyst for BOL alongside site publisher Tim Watts. It is a sweet Thursday, Tim Watts. A sweet 16 Thursday for the Alabama men's basketball team as it prepares to take on a historic program in college athletics, really, but college basketball specifically. The North Carolina Tar Heels, we'll be talking some hoops. We're going to talk some spring scrimmage, number one, under Kalen DeBoer at the University of Alabama. But first and foremost, I know you're kind of ornery this morning because MLB opening day, and we already have a postponement for that team on your shirt there, on your hoodie. I was pretty upset. I was. I had, like, the Braves to go to the Pelicans to go to BAM. I had this thing laid out today, and then the Braves game is rained out. I blame Philly to Bama, our loyal Philadelphia Philly fan on the round table. I think he got a Bull Durham type rain out trying to avoid this butt whooping. But yeah. No, no Spencer Strider today. this afternoon. And it was double header tomorrow, too. though. Yeah. Double, double header tomorrow. and appropriate that the Phillies are going to get this thing going, right? Yeah. I was excited. That's one of the reasons I was excited. I mean, we do a little trash talking on the board and, uh, um, have fun with it, but really love baseball, the whole day event that's going on. I'll still watch a bunch of it, you know, and a few fantasy teams. We got two o'clock. The Oreos are going to are gonna roll out there. Very good young team, massively young. They did an amazing job of drafting um, and building that team. Because you remember the Oreos were good when we were younger. Yeah, they, were, they were they were a team. Jim and, Palmer, you know, uh, that's going yeah, to be oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were Cal Ripken. I mean, who doesn't know Cal Ripken? I mean, we went. That's still it's still one of my best baseball or sport events was uh, live. Was we went to Camden, and we got. I'm talking. We were eight rows up directly from third base, and it was Manny Machado and um, Adrian Beltre were playing third. So we had a view. It was unbelievable. It was Forty bucks a ticket. The concessions were fantastic. We went to Fenway, stood in the parking lot for eighty bucks. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a the difference in price. We love Fenway too, though. I was I was kidding. We were we were upper deck, but it was amazing the tickets we got for forty bucks to see two Hall of Famers. Of the newer era ballparks, Camden Yards is still my favorite, and I'm with you on that. And especially if you go like midweek in the summer, mm -hmm. because there aren't a lot of tourists in Baltimore yeah. midweek no. in July. Mm -hmm. So you get the real ones when you go to an Orioles game. Yeah, yeah, uh, we were midweek especially. Uh, yeah, that's kind of really, what we really ran into, but their concessions are fantastic. Yeah, unbelievable out there yeah, in right field do. with the absolutely crowd yeah. is good. Everybody's into it. They they let you in early to watch batting practice. Mm -hmm. Not everybody does that. So yeah, opening day, sweet sixteen though. That's yes. what we're excited about. That's what we're. Uh, it's really fun playing on that weekend where, you know, only fifteen other teams do play. You know, it it's really fun is getting that far. Have you ever noticed that the sweet getting to the sweet 16 is not a big deal when your team's not in it? Like yeah. you see, like, oh, it's just a sweet 16. Well, where Make the, the final four and get back to me. Yeah, where are you? What do you mean it's not a big deal? You're not here. It's got to be a little bit of a big deal, right? Oh, also, if it, you tell it, me it's it not a big the alternative. deal. It's like a birthday, you know? Yeah. But also, if you got to tell people it's not a big deal, then we all know it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, exactly. We're just saying it's a good deal to be there. Yeah. Good morning to everybody. I know we got them. Uh, we got the viewers flooding in here. Screaming. And before we really get going to Tim, want to thank everyone. We just soared past the 8,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. Thank you. Thank Closing you. in on 10 K here. Going to get there very soon, but it's all possible because of these fine folks who make it a point to tune in and check us out. Not only here, but of course at BamaOnline.com, our podcast format as well of the program. So thank you. First and foremost, did not ready, think very busy, busy. Stretch. Never really saw a future with me and Travis doing <laughs> YouTube like this, uh, kind of laid back behind the scenes, just, you know, behind our keyboard, just like to uh, make our posts and our stories and stuff. But love it. Surprisingly, I love it. They kind of drug me into it when I got to on three and encouraged me. But I, I love these shows now. I have a good time with them. A lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, especially on a day like this when we've got so much to talk about. Yeah, We're going to go into the roundtable mailbag a little bit later, as we do on Thursdays here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. And by the way, very appreciative of the 8,000 plus who have made that click happen to this point. But if you haven't, 
now's a great time. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our YouTube content as it drops right here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. But Alabama men's basketball. So what's the confidence level as we sit here around mid-morning on Thursday, Tim Watts? Where are you at in terms of this team's chances against North Carolina? North Carolina playing some really good basketball at the right time of the year, pretty precision-like in taking apart Michigan State in the round of 32. And when I look at this North Carolina team, I see three guys that you can't really allow all three to get theirs. And that's kind of what happened against Michigan State, Armando Baker. Uh, you also had Harrison Ingram, R.J. Davis. They all got theirs. And yeah. uh, you mix in Cormac Ryan with that uh, as a fourth guy. I think those four players for Carolina last weekend combined for 69 of their 85 points in the win over Izzo and the Spartans. Yeah, those guys are good. You know, I'm a huge fan of uh, of R.J. Davis, the guard. I think he's the one. Sadly enough, he's to me, he's the best player. He doesn't get talked about as much as uh, Armando for some reason. I think it's just because he's a big, limited bigs in college, it seems, every year. But, uh, yeah, talented team, confident level. I mean, I think Alabama has a shot. I mean, they're underdog. We've seen a four-point underdog win hundreds of times in this tournament. Um, I think it comes down. I think I don't think Alabama's going to keep North Carolina from scoring based on one, their good offense, two, Bama's defense is suspicious, um, suspect at best half the time. But I do think Alabama's going to score. I think they're going to find ways. I think the defensive struggle they had last year, I think Grand Canyon was a really good defensive team. And I think the fact Alabama saw that defense helps this week, I think that carries over because, I mean, again, they were a very athletic, aggressive defensive team last week. Um, so I think that helps Alabama this week. I think it should, absolutely. Alabama had to win games or did win games in a couple different ways in those first two rounds, so that was good to see. I think for Alabama, I look at the scoring potential for this team, and you typically think, well, they're averaging 90 points per game. That That's not going to be a problem. Carolina is sneakily good, I would say, on the defensive end. So I still worry about, who's going to come along with Mark Sears. I'm to the point where I expect 20 plus from yeah. Mark Sears in any game, but who's going to be that other guy or two tonight, Tim, do you have concerns about that? Or do you feel like Ryland Griffin, Latrell right cell? We'll see in terms of his availability for this game. Uh, where's that production going to come from tonight? I know. I feel like when Ryland plays well, Alabama wins. I don't know if that's, backed up by data but I feel after a season of watching this team when he's had a good game especially early I feel like Alabama wins so I think Ryland's got to contribute I think Grant Nelson I think he's got to get off the snide at some point it's not that he lacks talent or anything else there's obviously a confidence factor right now that jumps in there so I think Grant needs to really have a good game a confident I, I didn't think his game last week was terrible wasn't good offensively but his hustle was there he was compete he was competing he just seems to lack uh offensive uh, confidence right now and then maybe you know give me a wild card I mean do you get a do you get a Muhammad do you get a Sam jumping in there because those guys are matchup problems I mean you got one that's a slasher you got a big guy that can shoot the three so I think really I mean it's going to come down like you said Sears should get his um, the guards should get his. Hopefully, Trelly's play, and I haven't seen a final verdict on that. But, um, you know, Bama's got to shoot the ball well to win in a situation like this for sure um, and then just hold on for dear life and ride it out. How many threes do you think it takes tonight for Alabama? I think it's got to be 12 low teens for Alabama to win this game, but that's just me. Yeah, that's double digits. Um, yeah, I think double digits. I think it would I think we could see in the mid teens if they're yeah. gonna win to make those shots. I think you can see them getting, I don't know, forty percent of their baskets that way. Yeah. You know, 40 percent of their points. And hey, this is a team that can do it. I mean, how well are they gonna guard the perimeter is the question. There's a lot of shooters on there on that uh end of the floor for Alabama. We just need Alabama to to go out and play loose. And I think the last two games they played emotional and I think they played loose. I don't think they look tight. Uh, against Grand Canyon, and that was kind of a hostile environment. You know, you had the fans slash actors. I think that's the conspiracy. Uh, they sure were synchronized in the in the stands and flying on the jets together. But I think Alabama um, rose up to that. I mean, I think they faced basically a road game of some sorts, and uh, they looked confident that whole game. Even losing that lead, 
they didn't seem to break. They just seemed to dig in and gear up. And um, and that was a frustration game for a team that, like, scores, you know, 90-plus every game. There was a lot of frustration factor there. But I feel like uh, those games helped and they've been loose. And, you know, you are what you are at this season. There's no need to worry about what you are. Lean into what you are. You know what I mean? Lean Don't into try it. to be something you aren't yeah. at this point. Exactly. I agree. And no need the whistle, to slap the floor. you never know with the whistle how it's going to be called. Um, you know, I would think there's going to be a great deal more freedom of movement because of how these two teams like to play. Carolina traditionally is, you know, man to man and they're not his own program at all. Right. So won't be surprised if they try to get out on the perimeter, push Alabama off the line, maybe try to send drivers inside to that size with Baycott. Uh, but Ideally, if you could get Baycott in some early foul trouble, that would really perhaps free some things up for you on the offensive end. Yeah, I, did, I knew North Carolina was an older team. I had no idea they are like in the middle of the NBA age range. You know what I mean? Like Baycott's they had that, like 30, you know? I mean, yeah, definitely. I saw where he said the ACC goes through him literally for a decade. It's went through. <laughs> so, yeah, he's all these guys that age the graphic where they showed – them versus the Oklahoma City Thunder was was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it was um, their starting lineup too. So they're a mature team. They're a talented team. They're a motivated team. Um, with all that said, they've got they got enough losses to let you know they're beatable, right? Also, this is North some, Carolina State in the ACC tournament now. State's been hot. They've been on one yeah. as we know. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. But they've got seven losses. Not to slight their season, that's still a good season. But they've got seven losses. A lot of times when you're playing the one, how many times do you play a one seed with seven losses? I mean, most of the time you're looking at three to four losses, right? So, yeah. I mean, I doubt you – I know uh, – who are the other three seats? Houston, UConn, Purdue. I don't think any of them had seven losses. Now, so Carolina this is a, was the fourth of the 4 one seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a very good team. And, again, mature, yeah. which is what you're betting on. But, again, a four, four-and-a-half point line, you're in this game. Um, we've seen much bigger upsets than this, I can assure you. You know, and there's been some history for Alabama, as we talked about, out west. Whether it was the only Elite Eight – appearance for this team that was out in phoenix i was at that mm -hmm. syracuse alabama game in the sweet 16 of course alabama ran into the eventual national champion in uconn in the round of eight nobody was beating uh Emeka and that crew yeah that was a team the that was a hell of a team um uh, under calhoun back in those days but yeah i mean there are some things that give you some optimism one of them being a four and a half point line uh for a team that has played as well as carolina of late, especially, that doesn't seem absorbently high. Um, you know, R.J. Davis, I think defensive efficiency for Alabama. I don't go into this thinking, boy, Alabama's going to do what it did to GCU. Not going to hold Carolina to 61 points tonight. But if R.J. Davis gets his 30, make him do it on like 26 shots like he did yeah. against NC State. Don't let him get there on 15 or 16, you know. Um, yeah. That would be ideal, I would think. I'm excited. I mean, I don't know what you can, what else you could be as an Alabama fan. I mean, I really think you're a cynic or just a guy that's always glasses half empty. It's already and, a great year. House money a, at this point, right? In a rebuilding year, which yeah. is what it was. Let's, I mean, there's it's it's exactly what it was. Probably Nate's least talented team from an NBA standpoint. They are playing North Carolina, uh, legit blue blood in the Sweet 16. So. Um, definitely house money, just a great season, fun. You can tell this team has fun, how they act after the wins. It you is know. nothing like a year ago, is it? When that team went to Louisville with everything it had encountered during that season, on and off the court, as a one seed, all the pressure on Alabama going up there to the Yum Yum Center and went out in the round of 16. If this team doesn't advance beyond tonight, I think, again, as we talked about, you're already talking about, a very, very uh, impressive season for Nate Oates in year five now with the Alabama Crimson Tide. What about this game being played at Crypto.com Arena, Tim? I'm still struggling to get used to that. That's Staples Center, you know, to me. But I guess like everything else these days, there's a price and Crypto.com, all these different arenas. I mean, we only have, when I thought about arenas, that have kind of remained sacred? Is it kind of Madison Square Garden and that's it? I mean, everything else is for sale when it comes to these uh, these title sponsors. And even Staples, 
seemed odd at the time, right? I mean, the Lakers oh, yeah. playing in a place named after office product. Uh, I mean, it started as the palace. Like, where the how the hell did we get to the, the Great Western Forum? Yes, back in the, the late show days. Yeah, yeah. So, how did we get? It's, to me, I just want to ask him. Like, do you actually make money? Do you actually make money off your name in there? I just feel like I feel like Staples didn't really capitalize. I feel like they've kind of they didn't anticipate Amazon. Yeah, Crypto.com Arena. It is. It is. It is hard for me. I'm still waiting for the. You know, I think we're going to see the little bit of uh, uh, advertisement on the jerseys and stuff. I'm, I mean, it's expensive. Everybody, you know, you got to yeah. pay a lot of money, so it's good to you, you got to make that money, but. Um, yeah, Alabama, the interest in this program is sky high. You know, if you want proof, just look at Houston Mallet. Was that did I say that right? I think that, so. Yeah. Mallet. Mallet. Yeah. Mallet. Mallet. Look at him. I mean, Charlie Potter had a good story, contacted Great. by 75 plus schools and chose Alabama. That should tell you that's a that's a pretty uh a guy that chose him really quick too. Hit the portal, Bam. talked to Nate, loved it, and boom came in. So obviously, you know, one of the top three uh recruiting classes in the country i believe so a lot of interest here it's a it's a good time uh to 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 follow we we remember small runs of this but right now feels like a good time for alabama basketball and you better enjoy it yeah this game tonight you know I mean? feels a little too florida ish for me in terms mm -hmm. of the matchup although i'll say and people will laugh at this i'm sure i think florida's tandem of guards together might have been tougher to guard than what Alabama's going to see collectively on the perimeter. R.J. Davis is a dude. Don't get me wrong. But uh, those two dudes for, for Florida were physical, old, and could score in a couple different ways. One so, of them was just a straight assassin. Yeah, that Clayton. kid, that one guy with the head. Clayton's a straight assassin. Yeah. That guy will stick a dagger in you in a heartbeat, really impressed with his shot. Took it in tough situation. Just one of those guards that didn't have much of a conscience when it came to, no. you know, he's one of those guys that he don't ever remember a shot he missed. You know <laughs> what I mean? You could tell like that. I ain't worried about that one. Gary I'm worried about the one. I, yeah. Yeah. So he was, so that, that, that was a big factor. Plus Florida was a good basketball team, especially a little bit of a heater. Me and you were on that early in the SEC yes. when people were, we were like, turn. me and you were like, why are these guys not ranked? Remember yeah. that? They have the same record as Alabama, who was like 14th. We're like, why is Florida not ranked? Yeah. So good team. But yeah, Alabama has a, had a pretty good season as far as who they lost to. Yeah. They lost to quality. You know, they lost to quality. There wasn't a lot of bad losses. Um, and I think it, you know, it helps, you know, there was a discussion on the round table of Bama played six tough opponents and went 0 and six. Um, I'd rather go 0 and six against tough opponents than six and 0 against cream puffs. I don't think you get anything from beating East, East Tennessee state 101 to 47. I don't think you get anything from it. Well, where, where your schedule shows up is when the draw does work out for you though. And you get a second round game like mm -hmm. you got with GCU. Uh, and you've been in some tough games, and even if it is a non-brand type of opponent, in the round of 32, everybody's a tough out, and you're able to gut it through like they did. That's where you can talk about 0-6, those type of things, but I think that's where the benefit of those games, and that's the way Nate, I'm sure, looks at it. You and know, you know what I'm, also Nate's it does? in March. He's not thinking yes. November, December. And when you play Purdue, when you play Arizona, when you play Creighton, you're getting different styles of basketball, which is what the NCAA tournament is. Let's be honest. You play in the SEC, styles might be different, but you're very familiar with each other by the end of that. You've scouted them. You've watched them. It's late in the year. You've played them. You're very familiar with whatever you get. You didn't really have a lot of scouting attempts to in that in that pre in that uh pre-conference schedule. Those guys are just figuring themselves out. Clemson lost. You know, that reminded me last year on a smaller dose of Connecticut. Clemson was a good basketball team. We saw they were a good basketball team, right? And they're playing in the game before Alabama, North Carolina That's, tonight against Arizona in the Sweet and that 16. Looked, and that looked like a bad loss at the time, but that was a good Clemson team. I remember when Connecticut just suffocated Alabama and the reaction of getting beat. That was a hell of <laughs> – Connecticut yeah. wasn't – you got to – the rankings don't matter. That's why – I mean, I'm, championship, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to trust my eyes, guys, when it comes to rankings and anything else, especially in the early season. And Connecticut and Clemson were two of the two bigger sleepers in the last two years.
Obviously so Connecticut. We've got Charlie Potter out in LA. So we've got you covered with all things Sweet 16, BOL. You'll want to keep it there with us. Game thread obviously will be festive uh, and lively coming up late night. Kind of a late tip, but uh, I think we'll all, even the old dogs like us, Tim, will figure out a way to stay up. Yeah, I'll be up. I'll be watching that thing. I'll be watching some West Coast baseball too. Yeah. Especially if is. the Dodgers play. Uh-huh. I got hey, money uh, against them. Any other time, boy, what would the talk be about in terms of a first scrimmage under a successor to Nick Saban at Alabama? But with the success of Alabama hoops, we get the best of all worlds. With Alabama set to undergo its first scrimmage under DeBoer, uh, I guess we'll start, Tim, with the Jalen Hale situation. Just one of those things. Uh, you hate to hear about for a young player that both of us anticipated taking another big step uh, in 2024. And and I guess if there is a silver lining, maybe that'll still happen. Maybe because of the timing of this situation, without knowing the exact extent of what it's going to take to get him back healthy. Uh, if this were going to happen, if, if this might not be, this wouldn't be the worst time, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there's no injuries ever a good injury, but I can tell you a young injury is better than an old injury. So these guys, knock on wood, would they seem to beat these timelines? I mean, how many times do you see Aaron Rodgers out from the year and he's riding a unicycle at halftime of the fifth game? You know what I mean? Like, you know, he goes, these guys go from walking. Boots well, Aaron's to- got Mr. Miyagi apparently too you know, to handle a lot of his medical stuff. So I don't know about that, but he, <laughs> that's true. He thinks he does, but I mean, I think, I think, I think the biggest thing is they recover so well They get on, you know, the medical staff does a good job uh, handling everything, but yeah, it's unfortunate because, uh, you know, we, we were kind of excited to see what he could do in this, uh, in this offense, Texas route runner, which is what they kind of, you know, those Texas kids know how to run some routes. They got a route tree, um, seven on seven, the high school team, and you see them play. So hopefully the best for him because I was really excited about seeing him, you know. Otherwise, what are some some items of interest uh, from this scrimmage that you're, you're going to be keeping your eyes and ears open for as we move throughout the afternoon and evening hours? I know so much is going to be made of the offensive – implementation installation has been a big word really on both sides of the ball for Kane Womack also on the defensive side but you know offensively with the quarterback situation that DeBoer and Nick Sheridan inherited and then to add Austin Mack to that mix um, even with the injury to Hale there's still some things you got to like about that group certainly with Ryan Williams still set to make his way on campus so offensive tackle offensive line where are you at on that side of the ball? And I want to see it all. I mean, I, I think for me, you know, I'm such, again, I'm such a recruiting guy. I say that I'm more about the individual than the units. I'm dying to see Jeremy Bernard and now Jose Cuevas. Guys we haven't seen before. I was excited, obviously, to see Jalen Hale. I want to see Justice Haynes, you know, and that kind of stuff. I want to see Austin Mack, Dylan. I want to see that. But units itself, I do want to see the offensive line. I want to see what they've got. Uh, you know, assuming Proctor does come back to Alabama, which he's indicated he will, I'd like to see what they've got now because that's going to be – you got to think he's a plug-and-play, right? You got to think he's coming in, plugging and playing and going to be ready, um, especially he should be here this summer, I think. So um, if he can enroll in the summer, he gets that extra two months before uh, the fall season starts. Um, I want to see the offensive line. I want to see what they can do. I want to see how they move together, how they work, the young guys. Will Conformby, Olas, you know, uh, Miles McVay, all these guys that we haven't really seen. I mean, we've seen the monsters. We've seen the dump trucks at, at offensive guard, right? We've seen them. And we've seen the centers with Parker Brailsford. So uh, Brock and Myers, a guy I'd like to see. How legit is this competition? He's got a lot of runs with the ones. And, you know, the run with the ones. And the thing is about that, you know, he's a twin, but he's a small twin. And those are often the pissed off twin, right? Yeah. It's like being – it's like it's like almost like being the second brother. So if you got a first brother, second brother, second one's always meaner, always meaner because he's got to fight everything for the first one. So I think that Brockmeyer is going in there and going to fist fight for that job. So interesting battle between him and Parker. We know how good Parker was last year. We do. And then defensively, a lot of next man up type of scenarios yeah. and maybe even next newcomers up. 
uh, mm -hmm. in some of those spots in the secondary, the edge positions. You are very much the president of the Quay Roussal fan club. That's well like documented Quay. and for good reason. Very promising young edge there. Um, is it kind of the back seven where you you yeah. got your focus right now? Yeah, I mean, you've heard so much. I mean, you know, you can, you know, obviously with no talented freshmen, you'd be excited about Keon Saab and Damani Jackson, right? We'd be excited to see them anyways. But then you start hearing about Red Morgan, Xavier Brown. I mean, Zay Mincy, come on. I mean, I don't know. If you're taking a photo of a defensive back for a Nike ad, I'm pretty sure he would get the he'd get the call. I mean, you know, the talented between the freshmen and experience with the older guys, a little more experience going into their junior year. There's just a lot to be excited. And of course, you got Malachi. Malachi, we don't even Malachi is such a staple. We barely even talk about him. But it was so, so huge, huge to have to him, get back. him back. Yeah, yeah, huge. And for many ways. And we've seen he's a leader on and off the field and you know, welcoming guys and teaching them guys. He's literally can be a quarterback in that secondary, helping everybody uh with any kind of transition with what they're doing. He wants a different defense. But he's going to be that guy that's vocal. <clears throat> he's comfortable with the team. So he is going to be the leader. Talked about this with Clint Lamb on the channel on Wednesday. What is the one thing you predict that we will overreact to the most coming out of this scrimmage? Is it a scenario in which maybe uh, the defense is ahead of the offense, which typically you expect this time of year? Now, for Alabama, it's a little bit different because you do have a lot of new guys that you're plugging into a new system. Uh, is it the quarterback situation, even with Jalen back? Uh, is it maybe even in the kicking game? Who knows? I think you have your answer with Jalen. He's quarterback one, right? So after that, I mean, I think that's kind of settled. It's who's competing behind him right now. Um I do expect the defense. I don't know what I expect. I'll be honest. I think I've talked to myself into wanting to see the defense more, even though I'm dying to see the offense. Yeah. I want to, I think I want to see the mixture. But yeah, I think that when you look at, at, I think the biggest concern, if I'm if not a concern, but if I'm the coaching staff, I think you can have too much concern based on this game because they're kind of putting them in adverse situations to see how they react. So they will fail. They're, you know, you know, feast or famine. They're going to famine. They're going to they're going to miss the beat on some of that. You got to see what they can do. You know, can you hit a left handed fat, you know, guy throwing 100 miles an hour? You got to get in it bad. Well, in football, they're going to get those chances and opportunities to do those things to see how far they can push. They got to know the limits of their guys. Right. Yeah. They've got to know the limits. And this is a good time. It's basically it's probably a bad word. But to me, it's like an audition. I mean, I don't know how you're not auditioning for your coach. You know what I mean? I think you're auditioning for your spot. You might be auditioning for the portal. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't a, know. I mean, there's a lot. Days. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. That's exactly what it is. Probably going to sound a little bit crueler than it is, but I think you're trying to earn your spot in the pecking order this year because you got to, you know, you got to prove what you can do to your, your coach. And the coach has got to prove it to them as well. I mean, this is a two-way portal street. It's going to be interesting too, not just at Alabama, but I'm guessing around college football with the new in-helmet communication and how that's already been incorporated yeah. into just practices. And I got to think too, that's beneficial, especially to Alabama because terminology has finally changed because of the staff change. It's always been more on the coaches that came in under Nick Saban to adapt to Alabama's terminology. Well, now I think it's flipped this time around to the players having to take ownership of that. But with the in helmet, terminology uh communication anyway maybe that helps you uh get it from the sideline or the coordinators to your offensive and defensive play callers hey what about philip thomas here we were talking about malachi here in the comments tim philip thomas says malachi could be the best defender on the alabama defense next year wow well, I, cer I certainly think he could be <clears throat> i don't know if he's the best he's certainly going to be good i don't know i think he could be the most important for sure i think he's going to help get a lot of guys lead i mean malachi is going to be that guy if you've got a ton of new guys which the secondary does right someone's got to lead by example someone's got to carry that over it's still bama that's still it's still we still do things the right way and how we do it and he can set the tone for that which is i know is what kane womack and uh, Kalen DeBoer would want. They want those older guys, like you just said, claim leadership and take over. But Malachi's experienced and certainly, you know, certainly battle tested for sure. 
going into this anyway, if it's not Malachi, you're thinking it's a Deontay Lawson, a Jihad Campbell. I mean, you've got some guys up front too. I don't know if statistically they're going to have, um, you know, the kind of years that are 10 tackles for loss, those type of things, but they're obviously Tim Keenan, Damon Payne, Tim Smith, Jaheim Otis when he's healthy. Those are going to be critical, critical guys. Uh, but as far as statistical splash, I would think Malachi is going to have that opportunity between tackles and also interceptions, pass yeah. breakups, uh, and then your two inside linebackers as well. And it, we'll, we'll get into some of the edge guys maybe a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate as we move that, forward. Philip. Yeah, Philip. thanks for the question there, uh, the comment there. And so, you know, as a part of all this too, Recruiting never stops, and this quarterback situation for 2025, Tim, continues to get a little more and more spicy. Um, what are you expecting this week between Juju Lewis and some other big-name guys that I know are on campus as we produce this live right now? Yeah, Juju's the biggest one, obviously. Now, he's went from a guy kind of like the staff, previous staff was recruiting, but – um, not like this. I mean, he's been back numerous times now, obviously one of the best, uh, you know, you know, you don't even, you know, the thing that's crazy, Juju takes so many visits, you don't even consider him a commitment. You got to like, I got to like remind myself when I, we were writing, you know, we were writing Nuggets the other day and I had to like, all the top quarterbacks are committed. I was about to say, except for Juju Lewis, who continues to visit Alabama, but he is committed to USC. So I think it's going to get interesting. Alabama, Auburn, um, USC, Georgia. Georgia's situation is going to be interesting because they got a 2026 quarterback and they've got Zollers, the uh the who I who I think, you know, I just jumped in this film the other day. He's the quarterback from Pennsylvania who's coming in. Matt Zollers, um very talented a guy, top 50 guy, probably for me would be in the discussion for number one overall quarterback. He's coming to see Alabama on April 1st. He's also visiting Georgia. So a lot of these dominoes are going to start to fall. And they could affect Juju. I mean, obviously, Georgia would probably be out if they got the the kid Zollers, although I'm not saying he at Georgia is getting it. I'm just saying the dominoes fall. But obviously, he likes Alabama a lot, um, Juju Lewis. He keeps coming back. And again, you know, with the top one of the top quarterbacks in the country, the NIL is going to factor in. But I think Kalen DeBoer, Courtney Morgan, the staff has – pretty good job of handling that aspect and figuring out what they want. But the longer it goes on, I think it helps Alabama's chances greatly as these other, again, these dominoes fall. Is it, is it pretty much Juju at the top of that quarterback list right now, in your opinion, Tim? Because I know Deuce Knight was a big part of that discussion initially upon Kalen DeBoer's arrival at Alabama. Yeah, I don't know if they actually rank him number one. I would think he's pretty high up there. I think they're still sorting through that. And the one aspect, you know, that that kind of changes everything against the portal because, you know, you do you pay, you know, they're all expensive, right? I mean, you saw the guy that went to Miami, that went to the NFL, who went ended up back in Miami. Uh, they're all expensive now. Are they going to be expensive sitting on your bench or is the guy coming in to start? I think it's the difference between the portal and the prep ranks, but um, I think he's up there. I mean, Zollers, they can, they continue to recruit other guys and evaluate. And I'll tell you, I think they're going to be pretty picky when all is said and done with the, uh, especially on the offensive end. I just think they're going to get the guys, you know, they're going to focus on the guys they want. Um, you know, I think that's the guys they are going to go after the hardest, but I think they're still sorting through that process. Cause as we noted, when they got here, most of these guys were committed. I mean, you had to sort through who you want. And, you know, before you flip somebody, you got to make sure you want them. So a it lot looks of factors. like, too, uh, as we've seen, Tim, Alabama making up some ground on some previous commitments to the Crimson Tide. Javion Hilson previously committed to Alabama, I guess now is committed to Florida State. He's from Cocoa, Florida, down around the Canaveral area. And then Auburn commitment to Caleb Falk recently was in Tuscaloosa. It looks like he scheduled an official visit as well. Yeah, Hilson's kind of interesting. You know, he committed after a game on Friday. None of us were expecting it. Boom, he just committed. He didn't just decommit during the coaching change. He flipped to FSU. So he's had a couple of surprise moments already. But, yeah, he came in for a visit. They did a good job of getting back in there. Falk is the younger brother of uh, Kendrick Falk, who is at Auburn. Um, so that's interesting. But one of those guys, those outside, you know, the linebacker, 
group, the edge group is going to be interesting because they've got a ton of guys to sort through, right? Um, obviously, you've seen the three linebacker run from last week, so they got some guys on the edge. Is that called Wolf? Yeah, Wolf, Dolph, the, those kind yep. of guys. You know, the Mike I got. I know who's the Mike. Stinger. I got Stinger. You got yeah, Mike. You got Bandit. Wolf. You got Husky. You got Rover. Yeah, you need a Bandit. Lot of it. I need banded. Yeah. I just banded. feel like the banded. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They um, but yeah, they have they're gonna have a lot of options to choose from defensively. I think they've set <laughs> the defensive I still think it's kind of funny, not ironic necessarily, but there was a lot of discussion about whether they knew to recruit the South or knew to recruit how important defense was. There was a lot of it. Um, and I think that's been answered. So now you wanted to see some offensive side soft guys on the offensive side of the ball. But obviously, Kane Walmack, Freddie Roach, Colin, Hitchler, Mo, Lindquist, they really have a good grip on what they're doing and where their board's set up. Wild times teams. indeed, because you're working to perhaps flip some guys that maybe were even previously committed to you, yeah. back to you, and then flip maybe some guys that are committed elsewhere. Uh, and I guess Antonio Coleman sort of fits that bill. I know Joseph Hastings of our staff recently had a – in-depth update with Antonio Coleman. Apparently, he had recently visited Auburn, previously committed to Auburn after committing to Alabama, back to Alabama. What's your advice to fans out there these days, Tim? With Antonio Coleman, I think he's just going to be – you know, we've seen this before. This wouldn't be the first in-state kid to go back and forth, back and forth. We've seen that before. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that's somewhat confused through the process or pulled in two directions. Um, with, with some of these guys, you know, I've said this probably for the last six or seven years, some of these guys, I just, I don't wipe my hands of them. I just don't predict anything they're going to do. I don't have an opinion. Um, Antonio could fall in that category. I just report or exactly. We know what they're, where they're going, what they're doing, you know, kind of the facts. And that's what we said when we're going through all the portal mess, when, when Caleb Downs was coming back, you know, and Proctor, well, I don't know if Downs was Downs wasn't coming back then, based on the information, the facts we had. Nothing led us to think Caleb Downs was coming back, but we had facts on Caden Proctor to make us think he was coming back. So you kind of you kind of have to switch into that mode. <clears throat> I said this on the roundtable the other day, and I think some people kind of got worried. It was like I didn't have a premonition. I don't have a I don't have a futuristic bone in my body with that. But I was just saying, enjoy the high times because there's going to be low times and that should have been what your process was through all of sports. I seriously don't get the fans who are only about the Super Bowl, the World Series, the college football playoffs. Everybody but if you, in that scenario only one group of people are going to be happy. Yeah, it's true. I enjoyed last year's football team. That was a crazy wild yeah. ride. I enjoyed and it. You did I enjoyed win a championship. It. You know, that's Absolutely. that's the thing too is how yeah discounted or devalued to some folks an sec championship is these days and beat georgia didn't Toughest just win, an SEC to win championship. by far yeah and beat things. a dynasty you yeah. you beat a team in the middle of yeah. a dynasty they were on a whatever streak um also you led and that you led a playoff game until the final three or four minutes of the game it was a mm -hmm. hell, hell of a year for me i enjoyed the season it's not all about the i like to win them all you know, I don't know. You I don't, don't trust everybody saying, I got to win it all. Nobody. <laughs> Michael Jordan played how many seasons? He has six championships. All right. Yeah. Can't aim higher than Mike. Hey, let's get into this roundtable mailbag. And we always appreciate our, Absolutely. our brethren and our sisters there at uh, BamaOnline.com who chime in in the mailbag to make it just this burgeoning hotspot. Uh, these days there on our message board, the round table. A um, couple things we're going to get into. Space Ghost, first and foremost, it was like, I guess, 2 o'clock yesterday. He was wondering if you were up or still asleep. Um, yeah, I mean, Tim's always ready to go. I don't think Tim sleeps much at all as it is. I got a you, know what else I threw, you know what else I threw out there? I don't know if you've seen it yet, but the Roadhouse remake uh, on Amazon Prime with Jake Gyllenhaal. I, I took two hours really? Saturday night because I am in my mid fifties and I sometimes don't have anything else to do. Uh, and the wife and I screened the roadhouse remake and we did get some input here from nitro express. He gave us the big double thumbs down. Have you seen it yet, Tim? Oh shit. Twice. 
twice. I my, like that gift set. Damn. I played my. I you played my. Bet. Well, had, my wife's out of town with the daughter on spring break. I was yeah. bored, like you were just describing one night. I swore I wasn't going to watch it. I said, "Forget it. I'll watch it." Hated it. <laughs> I, got, I got the boys home with me, so they walk in. They want to watch oh. a movie one day. And I haven't told him I've seen it. And I said, what are you? And I'm trying to skim past it on Prime. I'm like, and they're like, whoa, 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 what was that? I was like, no. And they went back. They said, let's watch the new Roadhouse because they know Connor McGregor. Oh, yeah. So, we went, so I watched it twice. And it was, was worse. Cringy with Connor. It was yeah. worse. It was worse the second time than the first, which is a rarity. Oh. Just the whole rushed. The I, whole I got rushed. lied to. I got lied to on on the roadhouse remake because I saw some reviews Tim, that were actually semi positive. And I didn't think Jake Gyllenhaal did a terrible job. No, he's a good role. actor. He's but a good actor, there was just but nothing it's... else, man. There there's, there's literally nothing else. And the problem is we're old enough to remember the original. We're old enough to remember even Ben Gazzara, the great Ben Gazzara as Brad Wesley. We remember Sam Elliott. Kelly Lynch, Swayze, of course. Sam Elliott. And there Sam was Elliott. there was a lot going on in that. You know, the the remake feels like it was totally a made for TV type yeah. of movie. There Whereas was a cool... the original felt like, yeah, I need to be in a in an actual theater. It was theater worthy. The first one. Yeah, I mean Swayze had a coolness about him, and everything he did, you couldn't really like. I mean, you can't really substitute. And I think Jake Gyllenham's a really good actor, but I mean, imagine him doing. Dirty dancing. You can't really. It's a it's a big role to fill to be as cool as Swayze was. I mean, Duke's busting a mullet. He could dance. He could kick your butt. I mean, Swayze had so much happening for him. And then it's set. That movie is set in Key West or wherever. It didn't need the name Roadhouse to it. Even the even the movie saying why are they calling this a Roadhouse? It's not a Roadhouse. So, I mean, shoddy writing overacting, bad acting, and they didn't really give the actors much of a chance. I mean, the no. storyline, I mean, dude goes to the hospital and some girl's attacking him. Thanks for bringing the patients. You're an ER nurse. What the hell do you think shows up yeah, in the ER? Yeah, it's terrible. Yes, just, I don't know. It's yeah. so bad I'd watch it just to judge it, but I did not. They could have named it. You watched it twice, even with family. I apologize I'm to I'm a hardcore I'm a hardcore dad. Like I, I could have taken kids. you to a nice dinner or something, and I made you watch that. Oh. Well, after that, my my son redeemed my, himself because he said, "Let's watch the Guy Ritchie movie." So we've been watching Snatch, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. Because hey, all right, good recommendation is The Gentleman on Netflix, the series. It was a really good movie with our boy. Um, all right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey yeah. was actually he was good in that. So that got him thinking Guy Ritchie. I was like, you know, she's married to Madonna. He's like, really? Let's watch the movies. I don't know how we leaked. <laughs> I don't know. I love my kids. That's a rabbit leak. hole. Yeah. I was like, do you even know who Madonna is? Yeah. But, um, that's a good recommendation. But if you want to watch Roadhouse, start a thread. I'll, I'll, I will uh, be, me and Travis will be sad with you. They oh. did the same to Point Break. They did the same yeah. to Point Break. They did the same um, with About Last Night with Rob Lowe and Demi Moore and, Jim Belushi, that I just don't know why you had to. Kevin Hart can carry well back then, maybe not as because they think Kevin. we're stupid, Tim. They think we'll watch anything. That's what they think, and a lot well, of times can... they're they're yeah, more they're right, right than they I'm should not, be. I'm not sure our own Joseph Hastings knew there was a first Top Gun. Yeah. I don't. I think, now, so COVID I think Top you... Gun helped bring me out of the funk. I will say well, that. But I think what I'm saying is the, the certain – no, 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 I love it. It was fantastic. But what I'm saying is a certain age group doesn't know about road the original Roadhouse yeah. and Point Break and uh, the original Top Gun in some cases. So I think you bring this in, they think it's the original. Yeah. You can yeah. always just watch the original. It's not like it aged. That's what I do. Point, I Break, didn't like watch them. Point Break didn't age. I mean, mm. it's still a good movie. I mean – Roadhouse, as hokey as it is, still a fantastic movie. I think Jay Gyllenhaal, he, he did an interview with Howard Stern recently. I think it was Gyllenhaal. He said he's watched Point Break more than 100 times. Yeah, yeah. I watched I watched it a lot. I thought Jake did a good dude. I tell you, disturbing was they did an interview with Conor McGregor. Have you seen that with Jake? And he no. was like twitching and not dude. Gyllenhaal? Nothing I mean, good. Conor? Yeah. Nothing is good. I'll send you that link when we're done. Nothing's yeah. good. He was, right he now. was, you saw him in the movie too. They, he was pumped. He was juiced up. I mean, 
Big this guy, time. I mean, he looks like, I don't know. I mean, he looked like almost having a seizure. I mean, he was like moving yeah. and looking and weird and, yeah, you know. Hey, he Pete's mugshot. Like... Go ahead. No, go ahead with Pete's mugshot. Pete's mugshot here in the round table mailbag. Oof. How many years of eligibility does T. Watts have left? Do you have any eligibility they want to know, Tim? Till retirement or what are we talking? Well, I mean, I mean, damn, these days, everybody, it seems like, got some kind of eligibility left. I mean, I'm watching I mean, college basketball players, college football quarterbacks. Seems like they're 46 years old now. You know, I'm since 2020, that, you might want to check. You probably have a year me or two. In, I'm not saying me and the big from North Carolina, Mondo, were in the same grade, but we were in the same school. You know, we... We uh, he's older than my kids, which is saying something at this point. But no eligibility oh, for me. Bama, Bama Hudson here in the mailbag. The new staff has made a tremendous early impression on the recruiting trail. How would you describe your take on that? Are you surprised? Totally expected it. Cautiously intrigued. Thanks for all the great content, fellas. This is Bama Hudson. Thanks, Bama Hudson. What do you say, Tim? I'm kind of suspicious. Bama Hudson's usually like. Busting my chops pretty good. I feel yeah. like this is a setup for future sharing future insults. Yeah. Yes. He uh no, he's one of our favorite posters. We go back and forth. Um, how would I describe what's our take on that? I'm not surprised because I never I never had a con I'm that rare guy that actually doesn't have a conclusion. If I don't know, I don't know. I had no idea what they would do. I knew what Robert Gillespie could do. I knew what Freddie Roach could do. I knew what Bob Weld and Ashley Kimball and all those people, Denzel Duvall, I knew what their roles were and what they were capable of. Highly valuable guys um, on the recruiting trail. So I took more of a wait and see stance, which is what I preached on the round table. Um, I'm not surprised. I wasn't totally expecting it again, but I am impressed. I know, I, I know that much. I just, again, to have spring going on and to be able to hand again, the reviews from the visitors are a plus reviews. So that means, cause look, it's easy to get offended. It's a very easily offended event. If Kaylin DeBoer doesn't fist bump you or, or, or a coach doesn't high five you, there's so much going on. They would never do it intentionally. There's just so much going on. This has happened. It's one of the reasons Saban didn't like having big visitor weekends on game day. Cause he was so busy. And he was distracted, but I'm not surprised. I wouldn't say it was expected, but I am I am impressed. I think getting all these guys on campus, again, triple figures and bringing them in and doing a good job and getting commitments. Again, it's March, but you got to lay that groundwork to get to December somehow. I mean, there's still a ton of recruiting to go, go but I would give them a, a 10 out of 10 on where recruiting is right now as far as a new staff, couple months old, set up, visitors. Again, Juju Lewis visiting again should tell you they have did a really good job. Tech Ticks 22 here in the mailbag. Who will be the next offensive commitment that Alabama lands, Tim? The next offensive. Offensive. Commitment. Been a run on linebackers here lately. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Who could it be? And it's all defense, isn't it? Seven out of yeah, eight because defense? you know I, we had we had the in depth interview with Derek Smith, right? Um, yeah. And it, I thought it was interesting because he, he talked about he they they see him as a safety, right? And yeah, he a guy that offensively can really do it too. I think he could play on the offensive side of the ball. I know at first, Kalen DeBoer and him were discussing the impact he could have on the offense, and then I think the defense. I think just with Derek, it's going to come down to exactly what he wants. Who's the next one? Man, that's tough. I'd go Jackson Lloyd. I would go Jackson Lloyd. And I hate going out on these limbs you guys put me on. Um, but I will say y'all never chop them off and yell at me. But I would go Jackson Lloyd if the guy wasn't so busy and he could come back for a visit. You know, the – Top 30 offensive lineman. Charles Powers got him up there from Carmel, home of Clinton, the mayor, Clint Eastwood, California. But the guy is, I liked him off his football tape, but he also plays basketball and baseball, which means I love him. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I was, when I found out he was waiting to visit, he's working around his baseball schedule. I was really excited. Like this dude's playing baseball. That, that, that has me pumped up. So I will go Jackson Lloyd. Other than that, I don't know. I think it's just like a slow trickle. Um, but it's not going to surprise me at some point if Bama doesn't get a wide receiver. Although I will say we, we talked about this in our nuggets, Alabama wide receiver is not like a pressing issue because they like a lot of their young wide receivers. 
they like a lot of those guys. Now, Jalen Hill can change it a little bit, but that doesn't really affect two years from now. Um, but I think they're still – I think I think they're going to be picky on the offensive side of the ball. Tide has Shira here in the mailbag. What do you all know about Matt Zollers? Zollers and the communication Bama has had. What do you all think of him as a prospect? Talked about him a little bit earlier, Tim. Yeah, I love him as a player. His film's really good. He's from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Um, there are obviously enough communication to get him to visit on April 1st. Now, he's interesting because he's deciding on uh, April 4th, I think. He's got a he's got a commitment date coming up. And again, I don't know what a commitment means right now. To some, it means oftentimes the quarterback locks it down when he commits. But obviously, Juju Lewis is committed, making sure he's made the right decision. So I think it just comes down. As a player, I love him. I think he's fantastic as a prospect. I think he's in the discussion for number one quarterback overall. I'm not saying he's number one, but communication is good enough to get him on campus. And again, I think if he is deciding on April 4th, on I mean, just a, a week away, that would put Alabama behind the eight ball. But if he's still going to take visits through the season and all, get him on campus, uh, it could be a step towards, you know, chipping into a commitment if he's committed elsewhere. Well, let's, uh, let's keep it rolling here in the mailbag. MTAQ asks, do either of you have plans to see the total solar eclipse on Monday? He says, I highly encourage everyone who is able to make the effort to see one in their lifetime from the path of totality. I took my son to South Carolina in 2017 because he said he didn't want any Christmas or birthday presents, just wanted to see the eclipse. What about it? I, I wasn't even aware of it. So I appreciate MTAQ getting me tuned into that regard, Tim. It's a good story. His son goes to Australia to see the yeah. uh, eclipses be in, in Mexico. Mexico this year to see it. Yeah. That's a hell of a story. Um, good for him to travel while he's young. Me, I don't know. I'm on the fence. You know, when I was in school, we had an eclipse and they take a white piece of paper. We poked a hole in it. And they said, if you look at it, look through that hole or you'll burn your eyeball. And I didn't even look through the paper. I'm like, why risk it? Why am I risking burning my, my, my retina, which sounds really bad, really painful. I didn't even risk it. So I don't know. I'd have to look into the details, but I will watch it on YouTube. Yeah, I was wondering, do I have to have like equipment or something? I, and and the weather, if the weather's good, I'll take a shot. Absolutely. And I, again, MTAQ, I appreciate MTAQ, do us a favor. Hop back in this thread if you watch this and explain to us how to watch it. Yeah. And everything, when to watch it. Because we are, we, I know we seem like scientists or astrologers, but we're not. Yeah. Uh, we've got, we're Google. not really good. We can use that too. Uh, Whoa, That's bro, good. here in the mailbag. Was Alabama's defense against Grand Canyon an anomaly, or is it here to say? How surprised would you be if this was the team that made it to a Final Four? We'll start with the defense, Tim. Uh, are you are you hopeful that some semblance of what we saw defensively against Grand Canyon uh, will carry over, or is this? in your opinion, going to be more about a change in matchups, both in terms of style of play for Carolina and, of course, the personnel, the more balanced personnel you're going to have to defend tonight with UNC. Yeah, I mean, Grand Canyon was a, I don't want to say a one-trick pony, but they clearly had one guy who, to me, is he's one of the best I've seen in the tournament so far. His performance was amazing. Sweet jumper, very active, athletic, but they weren't really balanced. North Carolina is going to be deeper. I don't have any... I, I wouldn't bet very heavily they're going to hold North Carolina in the 70s or even the low 80s. I think this game is a shoot them up. Um, the bad news is if it, it's a game where you're going to have to shoot them out. The good news is Alabama's pretty good at shooting them out, you know, shooting the ball at times. So as good as anybody's going to be able to do that. I like this team. Um, but, no, I don't think – I think that – as far as the matchup, that was a one went on right now. Yeah, I would sum it up this way: the defensive effort against Grand Canyon and moving forward to tonight. Don't be sad that that happened against Grand Canyon. Just be happy that it. Enjoy that it. it. Yeah. Smile that it happened. Yeah, <laughs> because I don't think it's scaring over into sure. tonight. Now, in terms of surprise level for this team, should it make the Final Four? I'll say this, Tim. I would be less surprised if this team made a Final Four then I was surprised that that 2004 team made the Elite Eight. I mean, just based on what's in front of Alabama. North Carolina is going to be especially tough, but 
you know, in 2004, that was, there was that sense of uh, you, you had to beat Stanford to, to get to Phoenix. Uh, then you got a pretty favorable matchup against Syracuse, especially an Alabama team that could shoot it from the perimeter against that 2-3 matchup of Jim Beheim. Uh, but you knew once you ran into Connecticut, for anyone, it was pretty much over. What about you? What what would be your surprise level if this team actually advanced out of L.A.? I mean, I've watched so many tournaments and seen so many crazy situations. But <clears throat> I would say beating there, you know, Arizona might be more difficult matchup for Alabama than North Carolina. I think North Carolina is good. Arizona, I thought they were really good when they – throughout the year, they've been really consistent. Um I would I would not be shocked because the tournament we have seen so many teams go, but it 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 would be a little bit our irony of last year's team not to go past this and this year's team to go past the Sweet 16. But that's the tournament. I mean, I know everybody, you know, we have those discussions and the the football bypassers that check in on basketball think it's easy to go to a Final Four. It's really not. That's why the teams that go often we we celebrate them the most. Absolutely. Um... You know, and, and as we've talked about many times, it all comes down to your draw, too. I thought Alabama yeah. benefited from that in the first couple of rounds. And, you know, I don't think it's a terrible matchup for Alabama tonight. Again, I, I can see some similarities to Florida in some ways with Carolina. So you don't necessarily like that. But absolutely, if it turns into kind of a first of 13 or 14 threes, uh, this team is capable of doing that. But Paul here in the roundtable mailbag, Tim, says, I hope I'm not too late. Deuce Knight, Juju Lewis, KJ Lacey. In terms of quarterbacks, what percent chance would you give currently yeah. that one of these guys flips to Alabama eventually? One of these guys, the chances, the best chance of one of those three to be a commitment assignee for Alabama for the 2025 cycle, Tim? That's a really tough question because – you know, to, to commit, you need two sides committed to it, right? Alabama hasn't really pushed for K.J. Lacey yet. They're recruiting him, and but they're evaluating a lot of quarterbacks right now. So te technically, to me, Juju Lewis, it would have to be him. I'm not saying out of those three because Alabama would like to have him. He's heavily looking at Alabama, too. I still think the road, again, committed to USC. Georgia's heavily invested there. Um, Auburn would certainly like a huge win there and they'll be heavily invested as well. So, but out of those three, I think that Alabama staff's probably got pushing a little harder for Juju right now. Um, maybe he wants to see some other guys in the camp. That's the thing with quarterbacks is like, these are all Southern quarterbacks. They haven't seen them live. Things could change even in the spring uh, football season, right? Cause they're about to go to practice and watch them. That's their spring football is basically their version of pro day for these college coaches, college coaches shows up, get to watch them work out and all that. So opinions could change. So they don't want to rush. Cause again, you want to get the right guy. You don't want to get the first guy. You want to make sure you're getting the guy you're most comfortable with. And I think again, Kalen DeBoer is such an offensive head coach. He's going to be extremely picky on what he's looking for. Rut 55 here in the mailbag. Does Ryan Williams make an immediate impact or does it take a while? We've talked about that plenty, I think. Now, with this Jalen Hale situation, I do see um, some carryover because Jalen Hale is a true X type of on-the-ball outside receiver. I think Ryan Williams can certainly be that guy as well. So when you do take into account the recent news, I, I, I think you said it earlier, you, you – saw Ryan Williams making that impact regardless. But then yeah. when you start factoring in the potential for injuries and return from an injury, uh, that only heightens it, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't think, yeah, I don't, I mean, I think Ryan was going to play anyways. Yeah. I just think he's that kind of guy. I mean, his nickname's Hollywood. He's extremely talented. You know, he's doing the work. You see him still doing the work. He's not a guy laid up and taking off the last half of the year, just chilling. So he's going to be ready to go. Um, and his talent level is going to be hard to keep him off the field. And you know what? I mean, as much as the coaches have talked about him, you can tell how excited they are. So he's definitely going to see the field regardless. How much? You know, I still think it depends on, like, you know, a guy like Jeremy Bernard. How much does he step up? How much does Kobe step up? How much did does Jalen step up if he's healthy? Because that will limit his touches. And they spread the ball around pretty good. I mean, they had three receivers you know, getting out there and getting after. And also you got to factor in the tight end. They're going to have some tight end play here that they've, they've had. And 
a pretty good offensive line it's looking like with a heavy running back room. So all that can factor in, but I just don't think you can keep Ryan off the field. I don't think you want to keep him off the field. No, regardless. And again, you hope for the best for Jalen Hale because a healthy Jalen Hale makes you better at the position. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Absolutely. Uh, Ronnie Bismuth here in the roundtable mailbag. Who do you think will be back next season off of this basketball team? And how competitive do you think Alabama is NIL-wise compared to the rest of the SEC in basketball? Uh, Tim, what do you think? I mean, it's almost impossible these days, especially in hoops, because just look at this Alabama team for how much turnover it underwent from last season to this one. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, again, there's a great question, but there's no real answers. I mean, does Mark Sears come back? I think he definitely would like to have him come back. Grant Nelson, does he come back? I think he's got a girlfriend back home. I mean, this has been a little bit of a, you know, a, a small fish in a big pond kind of situation. I think, you know, the heavy criticism and stuff is probably more noticeable to him. All speculation. I think Nate will do a good job of filling that void. You know, uh, Pringle, does he come back? I mean, he stays – you know, he's he's always got a foot in the doghouse, it sees. But he dude, dude's a leader. He was great the last yeah. game. I think that's what's frustrating about Pringle's best is what's going on the comp. You just yeah, never that's know. A, that's a that's a that's a true statement. But obviously very competitive, I think, in the NIL space. I mean, you got Darian Reed, Georgia was all in there trying to keep him in the state. Um, you got you got Aiden Sherrell, both are five star type players. So yeah, Houston Mallet, Mallet. I gotta make Already sure in the boat right. for next season. Yeah, so they're competitive for sure. But with basketball, there's so many guys to go around. You're gonna have guys. I think basketball does a better job of picking their battles. Than yeah, football. I think the arena talk that's more for the fans, and it's very important from that perspective. I mean, you have to have a high level fan experience uh, if you want to maximize revenues. Uh, in that regard. But I think for coaches more and more, and especially like Nate Oates, because he does actually have a very competitive facility within Coleman Coliseum, he'll take all that NIL money you want to give him, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's where the wars Absolutely. are being won and lost right now, whether you like I it or do, not. I do think basketball has always been smarter than football because four teams in football will continue to bid their self up for a player. Basketball, I think they walk away and go find another guy. That's what that's that's always been my experience. Even with the no NIL, that's how it worked. You know, when the bag was being dropped, yes. I think you, yeah, the the bag. That's why it's still funny to me is they're like NIL is running it. Like there's always been an NIL. We just named it. <laughs> we just it's a it's a different three letter name now. It was, it was NIL on the DL. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ab 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 I just wanted that to yell some of the tournaments. I yeah, had. some still, of it was. Yeah, there's some stuff pretty obvious, but um, yeah, I think Alabama's competitive there. I mean, they got some good players. Um, I think they got pretty good class he's got coming in, man. Wow. Yeah, and he's good again. You're getting a top target out of the portal right away. Um, and, but I will say the bigs, which is what Alabama, you know, loves. I mean, we love the term rim protector. Um, which they do need, uh, those are going to be the quarterbacks in the portal, just so you know. Like that's high school quarterback and then the big in the portal. Those are guys that they're, they're going to really, really have some options NIL-wise, proven bigs. Major Wood, 482 here in the mailbag. Who has the better season, Tim? Acuna, Harris, or Olsen? We're talking Atlanta Braves now. How many All-Stars does the Braves team have this season? I he major would think they could have as many as five or six if you include the pitchers. Hey, he's probably right. I mean, you got Ron, I think will have the better year. He's the reigning MVP, not a shot. I mean, Matt Olson's been great. I still remember when uh when Matt it was announced they traded for Matt and the round table went gonzo. They were like, Oh my God, we let Freddie go for this bum. And I was like, Tell me you don't stay up and watch West Coast baseball without telling me. Because Matt Olson's a monster. He was a monster yeah. in Oakland. I mean, he's a good football, he's a good baseball player. So I was kind of surprised at that over. That goes back to you don't know what you don't know, but you think you know something. That's that's like where I want to avoid in life. <laughs> but um <laughs> I wanna I'd say Austin, you know, is probably an all-star. Matt, Ron, Spence, you know, Strider. There's four I feel pretty good about. Then you got Ozzy, who could be in the mix, Michael Harris, who could be in the mix, Max Freed, who could be in the mix. But I'd say four. You know, we do the BOL, how many 
you know, over and under on the first round picks in the NFL draft. We're at three and a half. I'd go four and a half all stars for the Braves. Yeah. I'd go four and a half. Right now, I feel good about over because I feel like there's four pretty good chances. But it's baseball. You can hit a month slump pretty easy. So <laughs> impossible to project injuries Ab- and things like that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Our pal Tex Titer here. In the mailbag, what's your favorite piece of memorabilia, Bama or otherwise, Tim? Your favorite, which is that? My favorite is the Sweet 16 media guide from the year Villanova won the national championship. I was in high school, skipped school. They were at the BJCC. I had North Carolina. The only team that didn't sign it was... uh, was Maryland. I had all North Carolina's autographs. Kenny Smith was a butthole because he got his butt whooped. He was having a (laughs) hissy fit. Dean Smith was such a nice guy that he signed it twice. That I got him the first time, and the second time he just signed it and said, thanks for coming. This was after a loss. It was pretty amazing. That's the kind of guy Dean Smith was. Villanova was pretty cool. You know, they won the national championship. We hung out with them at the hotel lobby. After they won to go to the, the Sheridan, final four. was that the old? Is that the Sheridan? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's where my mom. That's where my best friend's mother was the manager. Oh wow! So we we walked over. This is crazy. Teenagers, when they won, we waited outside. We walked back to the Sheridan with them, and they were the coolest guy. I mean, later on, I found out they were all on cocaine. Apparently, but they were the <laughs> they were the coolest guys. Yeah. They were so nice to us. They were hanging out. I don't know if Ed Pinkney was on the uh, snow, but. You're right. It came of, out. There was definitely a scandal there for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of, but these guys were like, hey, y'all want a Coke? Hey, get get little man a Coke. They were just like the nicest nice. guys in the world. Went on to win a uh, national championship. So I got that autograph book. Um, it's pretty cool. I don't ask. I haven't asked for many autographs. I was a teenager then. Yeah, I've got a couple Daniel Moores uh, that, yeah. are, that are pretty cool. And then I mean, you can see, I, for me, my favorite is probably anything involving my kids playing ball, you know, anything from even little league and beyond. I mean, I've got the Jersey right there of one of them on the wall, right behind me. That yeah, super Jones good. Jersey, by the way, cost me less than the, the Hawaii Jersey in terms of framing and everything, because the story behind the chipper Jersey back there is that a friend of mine was in the sports bar business, probably 25 years ago, unfortunately went out of business he had this jersey. He had that and a Jerome Bettis box framed, signed, personalized, not really personalized, but signed by both Chipper and the, he said, look, I'll take a hundred bucks each for him. So that Chipper Jones jersey was a hundred dollars, just like it is up there. Box framed, signed, nice. game jersey. And then I have a Michael Jordan signed jersey, but That's I nice. need to get that authenticated. That one, that one I'm not, uh, but I'm not a big memorabilia guy. Never been big on it, but uh, you know it, it looks good on the walls. I guess. Are, are you? Were you a card collector at any point, Tim? Yeah, or, I was or? a legend. I mean, I was kind of a legendary guy. I had a collection that was. I had a great collection. I started in '69, and had basically every major All Star up to Ken Griffey Jr. And I had autographed baseballs, gloves, bass, wow. everything, footballs, everything. And I watched a 60 minute special that said 70 something percent of all sports memorabilia was fake they literally on this special showed a guy who had a box of footballs he would autograph and i think it might have been joe namath he would autograph it because they were in new york and he'd put it up there when they bought it he would get it out and autograph and he was doing it right there they were filming him and he didn't know it with the secret camera the next day monday i sold basically everything did you? A few years later, I got back into it and collected. Prices went through the roof. A Rod only would had a card in one thing because he wouldn't sign would wouldn't be in other cards. So um, during COVID, my youngest son was at my mom's and ran across something that said sports cards. He brought them home, and lo and behold, it had Kobe's in there. It's a low end Kobe Bryant rookies. We had like thirteen Kobe Bryant rookies. We ended up getting them graded. So got back in it, and my oldest one has jumped in there with us. So we collect again, cool. long story short, we collect again. Now I like sports cards. Um, I'm not obsessive, obsessive with, I mean, I see people trying to fight each other in Walmart on, you know, getting cards. I mean, I loved them when I was younger, but there was, there's nothing worse on this earth than sports card bubble gum. Oh gosh. Uh, they don't, yeah, they don't do terrible. that anymore. Yeah. Tasted they don't like the cards themselves back when well, I was a kid. 
You get all I'm, excited about that gum, and then it was trash every time, you know? Well, you know, I'm a candy fiend. I can tell you some stories about <laughs> buying. A, like, I bought a old, I bought a, a old box of 86 Dunruss, and um, yes, I'll, no, I will not sell BTR them. BTR90 buy. here in the comments. When is Tim selling his autographed cargo shorts? Now, those could be, you know, Jordan doesn't sign anything anymore. So, like, his stuff has just gone through the roof. It was already, I'm sure, high, but he doesn't sign at all anymore. But some Tim Watts autographed cargo shorts. I will autograph That's your cargo is. shorts. No, no, no. I'll yeah. autograph your cargo shorts as long as you're not in them and they're clean. But I'm keeping my own shorts. I like them. <laughs> but I was going to tell you that I bought an old box of 86 cards and with a in with a habit just started pounding the gum. And it was, I mean, it was probably Dennis eight to eleven years old. Yeah, it was hard. It was really, it was, you know what? Once yeah. I got through the, I, it was okay once I worked it. Mm. And I'm too dumb to spit it out. I'm like, crunch, crunch, crunch. Sounds like I'm breaking teeth, but oh, anyways. yeah, I've got probably three crowns that can be attributed uh, to uh, me and sports Shannon card Terry bubble gum. Could, yeah, me and Shannon Terry could rival you with any crowns and root canals. <laughs> He's a coward though. He quit candy. I did not. I'm still I out quit. here. I'm not a I'm quitter. still out here. Shannon's like, no, I'm not doing any more. Now I've I've gotten away from like some of the forever favorites like peanut MMs and I'm more of just dark chocolate and those things, but no, I, I'll never be able to give up candy. Ever. Well, I gave I did kick the Skittles because Oof. dudes will snatch a damn crown off. Yeah. Yeah. I did those give are, those up. I those did give dental. those up dental community approved it took skittles. me a lot my step my dentist is actually on the round table it's like ortho orthopedics now you know they love this pickleball craze now that we have yeah these my orthopedics son's... because you got these yeah. 45 and up non-athletes that are just jumping out there and you know popping achilles and knees and everything else it's been a big boon to the uh orthopedic community hey ceh bama for bama here as we round out the mailbag on this thursday he asked who needs my address to mail my hat to he still wants uh -huh. that hat he wants that hat also best predictions on which members of this basketball team will stay around for another year we just touched that on that let's go bama channel some magic magic johnson in la maybe tim and beat down carolina he's fired up about tonight I mean, I don't think, I don't know how you can't be, you know, and I already know there'll be the, you know, there'll be the ones griping and all about not going further if they lose. But um, I'm excited to have the opportunity to play. I know I'm getting to sound like Nick Saban, but I'm excited they're playing. I mean, yeah. I'm excited. I don't know how, I'd like to know how many people like sports, love sports, or just like Alabama. Um, Cause if you like sports, I mean, we'd be watching this, you and I'd be watching if Bama wasn't in it. So if I'm already excited, how the hell can I not be excited if the team I follow the closest is in it? That makes no that makes no sense to me. Our pal Ben here in the comments as we wrap up. How about an autographed hat? Look, if I sign anything, it it loses 50% of its value. And you don't, that, you don't and you his, don't want that, Ben. And if he lost 50%, of his hat's still worth $65. So <laughs> You just want the hat, Ben. You don't want no. You don't. You don't want. You don't want, you you don't want, want any. Of us to sign you don't anything. want any pin. You know, at best, inside on the bill, maybe on the uh, the inside of the hat. You don't want it on the outside. You're gonna ruin it. <laughs> and that should do it for another edition of T Watts and TR here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as we talked about earlier, we certainly hope you will do so. We recently surpassed 8,000 subscribers here on the channel. Hit the like button while you're at it as well. That helps us out. And also turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our YouTube content as it drops. And of course, the roundtable at BamaOnline.com. Tim Watts, Andrew Bone, Charlie Potter, Joseph Hastings, Jimmy Stein, Clint Lamb, all of us waiting for you right there at BamaOnline.com. Dot com. Tim, um, still uh, hate it that the Braves postpone doubleheader tomorrow. It'll be all right. We got plenty of we got plenty of pro golf. I can walk you through later today too. I told you I tried to like I tried to jump in yeah. on a Sunday, but I'm like I'm lost. I feel like I've missed it all. I'm out. <laughs> I'm gonna get you in. I'm gonna get you in for Masters Week. 
The Masters is coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm, that's when I'm going to get you. I have enough respect for you to I have enough respect for you to try it. If you ask to me, try to, it. If, if you guide me, All right. I mean, you got to like guide me. Jack is asking, off the- what streaming service do you use to watch MLB? I'll say this: no commercial either. But T-Mobile, pretty much every year on their Tuesdays giveaway, they do a season's worth of MLB. You get the MLB stream for a year on uh free if you're a T-Mobile. Yeah, I use uh I think I get the major league for Braves. I have to use Bally's, which yeah. goes through I'm assuming I haven't even tried it yet. I have to go through Bally's on a Direct TV and then for everything else I always stream. I always get them. You know the thing about the the packages Major League Baseball and NBA, you can cancel after a month. You can pick up at the end of the year if you Jump like. In. And that's and or you can do a, a discount for just your team. You just stream your teams by the month. So if you're a whatever fan, you're a Laker fan or you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan, you can get that and just watch those. I have friends that do that. So again, yeah, absolutely absolutely not an advertisement, but you know, it's pretty comfortable. I had two or three games on last night, just like hanging out, you know, pretending I know something. Yeah, I wonder who Atani had in those games. But uh, I can't I can't get over this. I can't get over. <laughs> There's no damn way my dude is getting a four point five million dollar credit limit as an interpreter. Oh. And then out there like he makes a hundred thousand a year. I'm like, that's all he gets. His whole life is hanging out with Otani. I feel like probably was underpaid. Oh, poor Tim. You just keep I- him going here. You know, I just, I just don't know. Like, this is the I mean, post game show now. We're officially into the post game show. So I find this, this bonus content. I tell you what I find interesting. This all came out when he's a Dodger, which tells me somebody's pissed. He's a Dodger. Somebody's That's my salty. Opinion. Yeah. Well, you know, you ever notice how a coach is at a college, and there's nothing they ever say about him, but when his butt leaves, boy, we got pictures of the mistress, his extra children, his. We got his. We got his credit report. But nothing was said for the seven years he was there, but the minute he because they nobody cares about the angels. I mean, you know. Well, I think somebody does. <laughs> somebody That's Anaheim. Him. That's Anaheim, man. He's officially I LA mean, if now. He, if he's not betting on baseball, I don't think we have a problem, right? I and wouldn't think so, but I don't understand you know, if the I don't problem, know how you can have a problem even these days that these guys are because all of these leagues are in bed with it now. Dude, I saw all, a stream. They're all tied into it now. I saw formally, a Twitter, officially. I saw a Twitter stream where they had every bad game and they I don't know if they knew I, you never know what somebody knows on Twitter, but they had every bad game and the money difference bet like on a tiny pitching and over. And he got rocked. They had this whole thread laid out, but I don't know if that's true. Mm. I still don't know mm. if Kate Middleton's video was AI or not. These people got me twisted on Twitter. These are the these sure. are the questions that we seek answers to. Hey Tim, enjoyed it, man. All right, we'll do it next week. We'll Everybody enjoy again. the game tonight. It's going to be enjoy fun. Enjoy it, and uh, we'll see how it goes for the Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the North Carolina. Tar Hills. For Tim Watts, Travis Ryder, thanking you once again for joining us right here on T Watts and TR. Until next time, so long, everybody.